Let's go. Hit it, maestro. One, two, three, four. It's a brother's game. Podcast. Podcast. Wow. Was that cool? Mm-hmm. Hi, Nikolai. We, we have an intro song after so long. That's Brian. <laughs> yes, this, this is me. Hi. This is the podcast. Yep. Are you, are you thrilled? Mm-hmm. What episode is this, Brian? 78? 77, I think. Like yeah. I said but, eight and six and yeah. you said seven. Who knows? Who knows? All, what I do know is that we are over a thousand downloads, baby. We are, finally. That's, that's pretty Took cool. Took four years, but we did it. That's pretty cool. Listen, it's not nothing. So thank you guys right. for listening. Um, we just, we're just we just going to keep being as consistent as we can. And yeah. if people listen, that's great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah been a long i was barely married when we started this podcast now i'm having right. a baby yep. having a ding dang baby <laughs> i'm about two weeks away from having a child yep. so uh i'm very busy <laughs> yep at home but we've got a lot a lot of stuff taken care of so yeah it's it's going well not mm-hmm. feeling too behind or anything <laughs> got plenty of diapers good good <laughs> it's gonna be great amazing uh, uh we're gonna pre-record a few of these yeah, and um, I don't know if you guys maybe want to give us input too, but uh, we're throwing around doing only once a month, maybe instead of mm-hmm. once every two months, at uh, least for a while, just while, for a little while bit. While baby's here, while while he's very newborn, mm-hmm. uh, so we'll see. Yeah, yeah. we'll just kind of see go go from there. Um, but we'll definitely pre-record some so that we have have something to put out. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, what's up? What's up? <laughs> Just so, having a good stretch. Yeah. So we should probably talk about the elephant that's oh running around and causing chaos in the world. Seven million purchases. Yeah. It broke seven million. <laughs> so there's this game. Yeah. I'm sure you've heard of it called Pal World. Yes. Um, I, I, I Nikolai, mm-hmm. will just say that uh, I despise it with every fiber <laughs> of my being. I hate everything it stands for. I hate the uh, idea of it, the very idea. Uh, its execution, its popularity, everything about it, <laughs> I despise. But let's talk about it and why I hate it so much. I don't have strong feelings about it. Yeah. I Understandable. am curious in the way like an anthropologist is curious while they're watching an animal do like throw feces like mm, yes. yes interesting fascinating tell I, me more yeah emphasis, <laughs> emphasis on the feces especially i love that uh you you mentioned to me that you watched donkey's video yes on it so, which i thought was perfect <laughs> he made the perfect video yeah so if you don't know somehow you're not on the internet very much or something or not in the pokemon world i guess um this is an indie game it's only in early access right now mm-hmm uh, it's called Pal World, and they marketed it. It marketed it, 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 <laughs> it as Pokemon with guns. Right, it was their big like tagline almost, and um, it seemed like a stupid indie game to me. Mm-hmm. Is is all it seemed like? It's like oh, they're they're making a weird Pokemon ripoff, uh, and then it crossed two million sales in mm-hmm. like the first five days. And now it's over 7 million. Yeah. And I'm like, first of all, that just shows the power of Pokemon (laughs) that this weird spinoff game sold that many copies. But like from the beginning, I've made a few tweets about this. Maybe look at my Twitter if you're, if you're interested, but, um, I like the concept of Pokemon with guns is the cringiest sounding thing I've ever heard (laughs) to me. I don't know. That's just sounds, but you have to remember that Fortnite is probably is cringe incarnate. Very true. And it's incredibly popular. So there is a big market for cringe. Very true. (laughs) Um, and you know, with the, I was hope maybe hopeful that it would be, um, at least creative Mm -hmm. the game. Maybe it's sort of original. Um, Pokemon with guns hasn't really been done. Okay. I hope you know, maybe it's something. And yeah. then Donkey's video highlighted perfectly 
how it is the most derivative game of all yeah. time. It's such I don't, an, like, sorry, go ahead. It's go such ahead. an odd amalgamation of different things because yeah. like every, every bit of it, I was like, okay, that looks like this thing from this game. This mm -hmm. looks like this thing from this other game. And it's like, how did you combine these things from these so dip games that are so Very different from different. each other yeah. and put them into one game? And it's maybe so that's what bizarre. people like about it. Yeah. But one of the top comments on Ducky's video, which I thought was perfect also, was this is like playing every early access survival game ever made. Yeah. And I'm like, 100% <laughs> right. true. Yeah, because like I got vibes from like Ark, which I played uh, absolutely. Like an hour of. Absolutely. Um, I, if... But but more even more low quality games like The Forest and yeah. all the, a bunch of other I think games uh, like that. someone pointed this out and I think that's really true is... Um, survival crafting games yes oh are just gosh. every there is an unending appetite for yeah i guess yeah. for some reason even though they're all identical <laughs> yeah because like obviously minecraft is still huge still yes. hugely popular like which is and it's still the best one i feel like yeah. like seeing m many like gameplay videos of other survival games mm -hmm. i'm like why would i not rather play minecraft over, yeah. the, over this i think one thing that's ever, ever since Minecraft first gained popularity, I think there's always been a market for and always a desire for Minecraft, but HD. Yes, definitely. And not like upscaled Minecraft, but actually right. like a high def game with the same mechanics. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of these indie survival games sort of try to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some are obviously more polished than others. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't change the fact that it's all a carbon copy of the same thing yeah. every, like every single time. Um, and that's, that's the most disappointing thing about how world is that there is, I don't think a single original idea in it. Yeah. Like the Pokemon designs or the pal designs are Pokemon. Yeah. They are straight up. Po like all of the most popular ones also mm -hmm. are just like, Oh, that's just Eevee, but a different color. Yeah. And it's just like, they are, there's a sheep that just looks identical. like Wooloo. That's Wooloo, yeah. yeah. And I mean, I know that, like, if you make a little cute animal creature, it kind of looks like a Pokemon. Yeah, and yeah it can, but, for sure. But, I mean, the side-by-sides on some of these are ridiculous. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of speculation. It's not proven, so I'm not gonna mm -hmm. I'm not going to rag on them for this, but that they straight-up stole 3D models and assets from Pokemon games mm. and just ported them into this game. And maybe that's true, maybe it's not, but they—I don't think that's necessarily true. But they're just tweaked just a little bit. Yeah. They could have maybe sold those and then like changed them just a little bit, or something like that. Um, there's also a lot of speculation because the creators are very pro AI. Mm -hmm. That that parts of the game are AI generated, also. Which, well, I, that wouldn't surprise me at all. Exactly, I, I, that just makes sense. Frankly, but like I don't expect, yeah. <laughs> even if even if, if even if no one wants this to happen right. from a purely business perspective yeah, it's i don't see why game companies wouldn't just use ai as much as possible exactly <laughs> and while i am totally against it and think it's very it's cheating basically mm -hmm. i mean it's just going to happen eventually so yeah. we kind of just have to yeah, see that it's unfortunate because like i think the good things about ai are removing um mundane parts of work mm -hmm. Uh, exactly and it, it, but instead they're actually using it to take care uh, to get rid creative. of the creative part <laughs> exactly yeah i saw somebody uh like a tweet or something where they were like humans are continuing to do jobs like data entry and stuff mm -hmm. where an ai is taking over art like, yeah which is character not what design. anybody thought was just, going to happen yeah. originally and that is not the what anybody really wants i don't think yeah. either but unless you're yeah. a you know Big, Unless you're a pure big business person where business you're like person trying to make money, yeah. Our artistic people are while they're not rare, they're uh not a majority of the population. Right. The majority of the population isn't artistic enough to do art as a job. Right. And uh and it, it takes and so practice it's a skilled and skill and job. And so yeah. it demands cost and yeah. uh, they demand uh, money which yeah. they should yeah. for their skill so <laughs> yeah exactly if companies are uh, whereas um the more mundane parts of making a video game uh um 
can be done by a much lower skill person. Yeah. So, so like in a, in a creating a video game using AI tools, um, I feel like humans should make the models and the character designs and all these you know interesting parts. Mm. But if you just need a giant thing of code, let the AI do that. Yeah. Like, duh. Like, if the if you just need a foundational structure yeah. for a couple of gameplay elements, or if you're like, great, use AI I need, for that. I need to iterate this ten thousand times, yeah, and I don't have a, an efficient way to do it myself. Then yeah, yeah let AI handle that's that. What I mean, that's, computers are for. Yeah, that, <laughs> it's like when you're uh, in IT and you're like, okay, I I have this task that I need to be need to have run on ten thousand things, so mm -hmm. I'm going to write a script to do it. Right. I'm automating it. Easy. Automation is a good thing for getting more work done uh with the same number of people mm -hmm. uh yeah when there's so many people who need like work and are skilled and should use their skills want to use their skills mm -hmm. why would we replace them with a computer it just is ridiculous yeah. but um anyway we're on the outside of all this so right. we're we're on the outside looking in so this is our perspective but um anyway pal world yeah <laughs> um it's it's still it's interesting how extremely controversial it is because the pokemon community is so huge it's so massive right. that there's huge groups on either side or mm -hmm. in the middle who love it hate it that sort of thing but i really feel like the people who love pal world are not the pokemon fans that i would want to associate with <laughs> 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 they're they're the people who only like charizard and <laughs> like we're really into selling pokemon cards but only for profit and like they really like i don't know basketball like yeah. i don't know like to me that's the pokemon and they, like, fan got into pokemon through pokemon go only and yeah. they're actually like and know. they're like they're they're like i know a lot about pokemon because i yeah. watched the anime as a kid yeah. and just now, like i don't know to be clear no, here, no hard judgment on I, those people, i don't want to gatekeep pokemon absolutely true exactly totally right. true i don't care how you came to uh, if you like Pokemon, I don't care how you came to right. like it. Yeah, we got to be careful with that. Yeah, exactly. I want to sure. make that clear because yeah, yeah. I don't want to be a jerk either. Mm -hmm. But you see what I'm saying, though, right? Like, yeah. like these are the people who want Pokemon with guns. Yeah, they want to make like Pikachu a slave. Like literally, that's what you do in Power. <laughs> I know World. that that was a little disturbing. You enslave when I realized them that and, that, that's and how like that works. you beat them with your fists and a pickaxe. Yeah. And I'm just like, why would you want this? Like. <laughs> The point is friendship. That's what but Pokemon's it, but about. Part of it, but I guess, like, you know how all, all the people have talked about, like, man, if you think about Pokemon, the actual implications of Pokemon right. for too long, it gets really disturbing. But that's... It's like the a game that has taken that to its conclusion. Yeah. it's Well, it's Pokemon in more realist, but more realistic, basically. Yeah. Like, they've done a good job of making put the pokemon world very different from our world mm -hmm. like those concepts are not in the pokemon world right the concept that you're forcing these pokemon to battle doesn't exist mm -hmm. they like it that's just part of being a pokemon like they've done a good job with that sort of making that yeah. make sense in the world but whereas in this game it's like oh yeah you enslave them duh what, yeah. <laughs> make them hit rocks for you yeah and it's just and so the one the one thing that irks me Mm -hmm. is the very vocal people who this is a literal quote i saw from a tweet <laughs> that was a very popular tweet that was like this is f this is the game we've all been asking for that we've been asking <laughs> game freak for and um that is the most delusional take i have ever seen in my life <laughs> never once have i considered that this is the pokemon game i want yeah. um honestly <laughs> If I were going, the game Pretty I would cool. give that title to would be Legends Arceus. Arceus. Exactly. <laughs> That's the game we were all asking for. And, and so they delivered. <laughs> and somebody else said, this is the game Arceus should have been. <laughs> wow. Okay. Exactly. Enraging, isn't it? Yeah. Um, thankfully, a lot of people ripped that tweet apart. They're like, you were insane. You yeah. know, a lot of people disagreed, thankfully. But um, it's just... And and one of the things that's like, well, at least this game is playable as opposed to uh, Scarlet <laughs> and Violet. And I'm like, I thought we were past 
graphics i thought we were like with indie yeah. games especially i thought we were past people only caring about graphics i don't think we ever will be yeah i guess not i was yeah. sort of more hopeful of the video game community but mm -hmm. <laughs> apparently not like apparently graphics matter way more than gameplay yeah. like not to admit like yeah there's a shocking <laughs> percentage of the gamer population that cares yeah. more about graphics than game also power world doesn't look that good like, that. Yeah. <laughs> like it doesn't like the way your character moves it looks so floaty and weird <laughs> um but and scarlet and violet is very fun to me i don't know like yeah i think it's very fun legends arceus is incredibly fun to mm -hmm. play uh i just i'm i'm disappointed a little <laughs> bit <laughs> in, in the people yeah uh thankfully I had a lot of people agreeing with me also, and I agreeing with them. But um, I'm just shocked that 7 million people bought that game. Yeah. Um, it is not a game to me that deserves making millions of dollars, millions in sales, mm -hmm. millions. Yeah. Um, I don't think there was any heart put in, like any <laughs> care put into that <laughs> yeah. by the developers. I don't know the developers personally, obviously. But I just, it's just a little, a little sad to me. Um, yeah. It's, uh, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe 7 million people are right. I don't know. Like, yeah. maybe I'm the one in the wrong camp, but, but uh, yeah. I mean, well, I'm very curious to see if it's a flash in the pan type of thing. Yeah. If it like, if the hype dies out really quickly and right. then, yeah. Right. But it just, watching gameplay was like, it's such a grind fest. It just mm -hmm. looks like a monotonous survival grind fest. Yeah. Well, and Donkey's video, again, Donkey's video really yeah. <laughs> illustrated that very well. Like, oh, wow. Like, this is awful. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I love, like, um, I could praise Donkey all day for his uh, content creation, mm -hmm. but he's so good at giving commentary and showing what he thinks about a game with ever, without ever explicitly saying it necessarily. Uh -huh. <laughs> but... He makes it very clear. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, it's funny, too. I was thinking about all the sales and stuff, and I wouldn't be surprised if at least a million of those were just content creators yeah. who are just who just need to make videos about it because it's the new popular thing. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> I think that's absolutely true because everyone and their moms uh, makes YouTube videos and streams mm -hmm. on Twitch now. And yeah. so I think there's a lot, a lot of yeah. those are just content creators well, wanting to make content just, with it. Just like uh, the most recent one I saw before this game was Rust. Oh yeah, and that, huge. That was the, along the same lines. All the streamers huge. played it, and yeah. for sure, for sure. Because I mean, because again, it's just another survival uh, game that's the yeah. same as all the others. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know, who, who, but I do know. Yeah, I'm, and I'm right. So like, may, I, I might, I might be in the wrong industry. Maybe I should make a survival <laughs> maybe, crafting game, and maybe I'll make, make a fortune. Make off Pokemon of that. with guns and make yeah. make millions of dollars. I guess, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it was a bit. It's a, a bit surprising, <laughs> is, is all. And uh, but speaking of Pokemon Day is less than a month away now. Yep, and there is a lot of speculation about what announcements might be made and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, the general consensus, and I would agree, is that uh, another Legends game would be the best the yeah. best thing could, that, that could happen, basically. Uh, I don't know what you think about that. But... Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to get my hopes up about exactly. that, but it would be cool. Exactly. Uh, yeah. I, I'd certainly love another Legends game. Uh, yep. And I... So... For the gaming industry as a whole, yeah. I am totally over open world games. But yeah. for Pokemon, because it's such a relatively new thing for yeah. Pokemon, I'm totally happy with another uh, Scarlet Violet style game. Mm -hmm. I like. I I kind of don't. I don't necessarily want that to be what Pokemon is for the rest of time necessarily. Mm -hmm. right. But uh, it's cool right now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Seeing Pokemon running around in the wild, is, is I like it. It's really nice. Yeah. That's one of the biggest things that, like, um, that Let's Go and Sword and Shield, you know, first started. 
just seeing Pokemon in the overworld instead of mm-hmm. um, having to go into the grass and have an instance or whatever yeah. is just fantastic. One of the best changes yeah. ever put into Pokemon. And the probably. thing is, is I don't, I almost don't really even see like a Pokemon X Y even happening again because I think we've uh, they've gone too far to, in this direction to go back. If the, mm-hmm. like imagine if they released a two D Pokemon game that's yeah. turned that's uh, got like random backwards. encounters and everything yeah. is like I'd people be would shocked. be like what Yeah, I'd be shocked if they did that. Yeah, like. Um, it'd be interesting mm-hmm. and like maybe they do something cool with it. Yeah. But yeah, that doesn't seem like actually a thing they would ever do. One thing that I th- I think would be really cool that I don't see ever happening mm-hmm. outside of fan made games would be a map on the scale of like Paldea mm-hmm. that's that big but 2D. Yeah. And yeah. like and sprites. Just and a stuff. massive like But yeah. just huge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder, I'm sure it exists now with indie games and stuff, mm-hmm. but yeah, a 2D open world game, basically. Yeah. Like, like as large as other open world games, but fully 2D in sprites. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if that's been done because that's, I wonder if that could, yeah. could work. I'm sure it has to have been, but yeah. it can't some, be some common because game. I haven't ever seen it yeah. myself. Yeah. It's just, it's interesting. Yeah, a lot of people, there's like, there's speculation that they're going to make a black and white three at some point, mm-hmm. but that's purely because in one interview, they said like, they said, if we have ideas for it and really want to do it, we might basically yeah. is what he said. And that was like, you know, 10 plus years ago when they made black uh, and white two. And I'm like, that is not enough to go on yeah. <laughs> to think they're going to. That would because that would not sell well nowadays. Yeah, not enough people have played or obsessed with Black and White Two. Yeah, like new players would never get there Black is, and White yeah, Three. Yeah, they do like, have this hardcore fan base, but it's probably not yeah. really all that big. Yeah. I don't think it's that would not be lucrative for them, so they won't do it probably. <laughs> yeah, you know. So, I don't but know. it would be the next gen to get. Uh, yeah. It is modern the, remake. The next one to get a would remake would be black and so. white. So yeah. So yeah. Besides the legend game, that's the biggest, um, you know, thought people are having is that it's just some sort of remake uh, for black and white. Mm-hmm. Um, people are very hopeful that it's not the same as the, the Diamond and Pearl ones. Yeah. Because those were not the best. Yeah. Not that they did not bring their A game with those. Mm-hmm. Um, so. So I mean, we'll see. There's been a lot of talk of Gen 2, though, also, Mm. Um, because Pokemon has been talking about Gen 2 a lot. Mm. There's been a lot of, like, social media posts that highlight Ho-Oh and Lugia, uh, as well as Crystal. Yeah, well... Like, and it's very cryptic and different. A a modern Johto game would be great. Mm -hmm. A Johto is a a really cool region. Great region. Great Pokemon. very underrated. Yeah. Because... While Heart Gold and Soul Silver, I think, were pretty well received, I don't think Gold and Silver and Crystal are really thought of all that highly. Not highly, no, not really. Among like when you compare it to the rest of all of Pokemon, mm-hmm. I don't think they're really they uh, held high in high esteem. Not really, at yeah. All. yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of hardcore fans say that Heart Gold and Soul Silver are like the best Pokemon games, like mm-hmm. the ultimate Pokemon games, which is funny because that's actually what the developers were trying to do with it yeah. to make the, the ultimate Pokemon games, basically. Um, and I mean, it is, they are very well made and yeah. very, a lot of little details and polished uh, to those games that I do really like. Um, so I think a Legends, I've always, I've said this before, but Legends Celebi yeah. would be perfection. Absolutely. That would be That'd perfection. Be great. Because with the, the vintage, the, you know, the like Edo period Japan vibes mm-hmm. from like the Ecruteak City and stuff. You know, we could see the story of the Burning Tower or or yeah. and all kinds of different stuff. Oh yeah. So, so in yeah. those um, things they do on the Pokemon YouTube channel, the little animated uh, mini series yeah. they do yeah. on there, the one with the Johto with the uh, Kimono girls and the evolutions, yeah. yeah, that yeah. was great. Yeah. And I think yeah, I think they could really do something really cool with that mm-hmm. so wishful thinking 
if we sure. get if we get Legend Celebi and you know interesting black and white remakes. I mean, you that would just be too good to be true. A little yeah. bit like. I don't know, but we'll see. You know, yeah. they, uh, <laughs> Pokemon fans all of a sudden go, we forgive everything yeah, we've ever <laughs> I'm so sorry. And, they, and then it all runs beautifully, yeah. beautifully optimized for the Switch. Yeah. Um, oh, speaking of Switch, um, some big um, rumors slash leaks mm-hmm. have come out about the Switch 2 um, that are apparently from very reliable sources mm. um, and even like large business like uh, websites are making articles about this yeah. because it's so believable basically um it's like the specs on the switch 2 mm-hmm. basically the idea is that it's uh, an 8 inch screen a little larger than okay. the i think the regular switch is like 7.1 or something okay um uh it's only an LCD screen not OLED okay which is interesting mm. uh i could i could see Nintendo doing that purely to keep costs down mm-hmm. so they could sell it for a little cheaper because yeah. they, they try to be the cheaper console you know because they don't want to they don't want to sell the switch to at 500 bucks like no right. one's gonna buy that so um so i could see that um and then some just general specs um and people basically it's as powerful as the ps4 which is what mm. people have been saying for a long time um so that's the current leaks quote unquote yeah. and that um there's already launch titles set for it and then mm. it's coming out this year by by end of this year um well, that'd be cool uh and there's a lot of people are saying there's going to be upscaled versions of scarlet and violet released that'd be nice released as launch titles um uh so that'd be cool it'd be really nice if you didn't have to buy another version of the game like yeah i hope i don't have to buy it again to play it on the switch too because they're supposedly the Switch 2 is backwards compatible. So, yeah. but you know, who knows? Uh, as well as FF7 Remake is one of the possible launch, mm. probable launch titles, yeah. uh, which would be really cool also. I'm looking at possibly getting a PS5 in the next. Yes. I, little mom, while. My mom, our mom told me about that actually. Yeah. So, um, because I really want to what play do you really want to play? Yeah. The follow ups to FF7 Remake. Yeah. Integrate and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And, I could play them on PC, but like... Ooh, you could also get uh, Persona 3 Reload. Oh, yeah. That's coming out really soon in the next couple of weeks. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And that looks amazing. That looks gorgeous. Yeah. Ugh. And it, like, as long as I can play all my PS4 games on it, and I think you most basically can. I think so. Um, Yeah, then I would just... You'll just have to get the disc version, but yeah. Yeah, which I was going to get anyway. Yeah, I prefer physical hardware also, so... Mm-hmm. Or physical software. Like... Oh, also, so I bought Halo Master Chief Collection on Steam. Uh-huh. And it's only like 35 gigs. On the Xbox, it's Weird. like 300. Weird. I don't understand. Yeah, what's that about? How, how did you compact it that small? When yeah, I wonder. Yeah. I'm, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm curious what the um, experience will be playing it on PC. Yeah, yeah. I've never played hail on pc before so yeah technically i haven't either yeah which is kind of funny i haven't actually made any attempt to really emulate uh xbox games at all Mm. on pc yeah uh which it's should in some ways it should be easier because it's It's microsoft (laughs) well because the xbox was like the most pc like Mm -hmm. console when it launched especially the xbox 360 i mean one of the prototype xbox 360s was a literal mac (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. but the thing is it didn't use um x86 architecture mm-hmm. and so and so uh speaking of emulation let's go, just go down this rabbit hole just for a little emulation so emulation. No the, breathing. one of the tricks to emulation is that the cpus that are used in game consoles are not the same as the cpus used in computers computers use mm-hmm. predominantly x86 cpus Mm -hmm. um so intel and amd uh and uh apple computers used intel cpus for a long time Mm -hmm. uh they haven't always and they don't anymore but they Mm -hmm. have they did for a while so but each uh game console has its own uh little cpu and they're usually they're usually off the shelf parts but they're not um what you would put in a pc and so the games are written with instruction sets for those CPUs. Mm-hmm. 
So like Game Boy cartridges, uh, the, the ROMs, the, the actual game is written to work with that particular CPU. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, and the earliest games were written in assembly code. So they were very low level code. Right. So you're literally like telling the CPU what to do, like line by line. Pretty yeah. Much. Jeez. Whereas modern applications, they just like say, okay, CPU, we want you to do this, do it however you do it. Yeah. <laughs> do whatever you want. That's funny. So, um, because of that, when you're emulating, you have to basically, you have to emulate that CPU mm -hmm. so that the game interacts with it the way it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. And so like there's software emulation and there's hardware emulation, hardware emulation. All it really is, is you have what's called an FPGA, a field programmable, programmable grid array, I believe is what that stands for. And basically it's field programmable. So you can actually change how it works. Like after it's been made, mm -hmm. whereas a normal CPU is pretty much, you can't it's really set. change how it works. Mm -hmm. You can tell it to do stuff, but you can't really change how it does things. Whereas the FPGA, you can literally reprogram it after it's been made and put into a gotcha. system. And so uh, the idea with a hardware um, emulator is you use an FPGA to uh, mimic how a certain CPU worked. Right. But, and so like some people tout FPGAs and hardware emulation as way better than software. But the thing is, is it's all down to the hardware programmer's ability to mimic that <laughs> CPU. Yeah. And it depends on how good they are at doing that. So is that why certain emulators are better than others mm -hmm. and, and so on? Yeah. It, it really comes down to how well do they mimic how that original CPU worked. Yeah. Because if, if they can't do it right, then the game is going to be glitchy because it's feeding instructions to the CPU that doesn't work the same as what it was designed to work with. Yeah. And older things are just more simple. Therefore, older emulators yeah. are easier to make work the, well. <laughs> yeah, that's why like NES games are super easy to emulate Incredibly because easy, yeah. yeah, the they're so much simpler. But yeah, yeah. but that's, that's part of why there's some oddball games that just do not emulate well. Like Mario Tennis for some reason. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> weird. Like it won't run on Project 64 because it doesn't. Or I think you can like say, I know that this won't run well and I'll try it anyway. And then it'll just like whiz out, but try to run. And uh, yeah. So is that, so that must be Project 64's fault, right? Yeah, technically, but it's also, I think it's probably just oddities in how the game was coded. The game was just coded weirdly. Yeah. Yeah. Because. Uh, it as, actually kind of makes sense because uh, that's made by Intelligent Systems, mm -hmm. and they are a very unique company yeah. with very unique like procedures. Yeah. So. And uh, for, from what I've heard, um, so the N64 was when they started using C code as opposed to assembly language. C code is a lot more, it's a higher level language, so you can use more complex stuff um, without having to manually do as much, but... Uh, they were uh, uh, all the developers using it to code games were all brand new to it. And mm -hmm. so they were still learning how the, the coding language worked, let alone how to make this game using mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And uh, so that's why a lot of games were actually very poorly optimized in the beginning for the mm -hmm. N64. And yeah. And so also like with the original Xbox, there's a game that emulates very poorly and nobody seems to be no one knows interested why, in or making it work and like putting the effort in to make it good and that is mech assault oh. which is a game i actually own really and like enjoy game, yeah so it's the basically the main reason i keep my original xbox yep. is to play that game yep <laughs> just for mech assault yep. that's true love yep <laughs> that's awesome I have been playing, uh, I did finish pretty much everything there is to be done in Scarlet Violet now, now that I've Oh yeah, so what'd you DLC. think of the epilogue? It was fun. Mochi, 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 mochi. mochi. Yeah, um, it was fun. Yeah. Um, I like that sort of your Paldea friends met Carmen yeah. and Kieran. Uh, Kieran being nice for, again, was, was good. Mm. <laughs> Petrarunt is very strange. <laughs> Mm. people are kind of mad about a thing about Petrarunt mm. because the game doesn't really go into the lore at all Yeah, about Petrarunt. But the Pokemon Twitter t tweeted like a video 
mm-hmm. about the whole lore. It's like a oh. video that explains the lore. And it's like a it's well like animated, like it's there's new illustrations in it. Mm-hmm. And everyone's just like, why didn't you put that in the game? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is understandable. But Pokemon is very multimedia. They yeah. lo- they love doing that. So I'm yeah. not surprised that they did that. Oh, well, just Japanese game companies in general yes, are it like is that. very Japanese. See Kingdom Hearts as Exhibit yeah, A. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're lucky they don't make a mobile game. <laughs> that, that's the only way to get the real story. Yeah, um, yeah it's not. They're not Nomura. Um, <laughs> but so I would recommend looking into that because it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Basically, yeah, Petrarunt created the toxic chain. It It mm. is the overlord of the three, you know, rascals, the three evil, mm. you know, o- Okie Dogie and all them. Um, and told them to steal the masks from Ogre Pond, <laughs> wow. all kinds of stuff. Yeah, o- Petrarunt is very um, self- evil, selfish, <laughs> yeah. selfish, selfish. Yeah, hmm. um, and yeah, shoots mochi at people to <laughs> to poison them and and stuff. Very strange. <laughs> um, Petrarunt's got like a crazy stat. Hmm. It's like defense. Or special defense or something is like 250. Like it's something yeah. absolutely insane. Um, and its ability is also insane. No. Basically, if it um, poisons you, I think, um, it automatically confuses you at the same time. Oh, yeah. Which is just insane. I think I, 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 uh, <laughs> Cause I yeah, remember I, that. I, I ran I into it in battling it also. When I was... Uh... Trying to catch it. And it's no one I didn't one shot it because yeah, it has like crazy defense in, in some way. Because yeah. I think I was using physical or something. I don't remember exactly, but yeah. No. Uh but it's cool. It's mm-hmm. cool to have a mythical also. Um I think I have regrets, right, from the past of missing mythicals and stuff yeah. that are now impossible to get otherwise. Mm-hmm. So I want to get <laughs> everything I possibly can. Yeah. Well while, while it's available, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like I I got as a kid. I got mythicals through Game Shark because, right? Yeah, yeah, for real. Like, uh, I really want um, shiny versions of Solgaleo and Lunala. Hmm. Um, and there were those were given away in events back in 2017 or something. Yeah, um, just for free. You could get both shiny <laughs> in a Cherish Ball. And I could have just, I had those games then. I could have done that if yeah. I had tried. And now uh-huh. I'm like, why didn't I do that? <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> now the only way to get those shiny is by uh, Dynamax Adventures mm. in um, the Crown Tundra for Sword and Shield. Okay. Uh, and I'm like, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to do that. Yeah. I really wish uh, the legendaries weren't shiny locked in Scarlet and Violet. Mm. That'd be really nice if I could just hunt those like that but that'd be too easy yeah. <laughs> too easy i guess but speaking of shiny hunting and scarlet and violet mm-hmm. i officially have every single starter shiny nice in scarlet and violet every starter from generation one to current yep. um it was uh it was a journey yeah i also have a bonus little team of shinies uh fully evolved Mm-hmm. starters um because a few of them i got two of either by accident or trying um uh, i remember i was so i was gonna hatch eggs to get a shiny squirtle mm-hmm. just because um it's annoying to it's really annoying to look for water starters mm-hmm. just or water pokemon in general because um it's really you get a lot of slowdown when you're in the water right in scarlet and violet and also, there's so many other water types around that I'm like, I just want Squirtle, you know? So I'm like, I'll just do eggs for it, right? And after 300 eggs, I didn't have a shiny Squirtle, <laughs> <laughs> which is very unfortunate. Um, but it was what was awesome is I was hatching these eggs on the beach, mm-hmm. in, the, the co- in the large beach, in the coastal biome, uh, just because there's a lot of room to run around. And while I was shiny hunting... Or, um, or hatching eggs, shiny hunting that way. Uh, I ran past this group of Grookey mm-hmm. uh, that, that spawned, and I went, well, one of those Grookey looks a little different than the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'd already gotten Grookey uh, from my, for, 
for having one of each, you know? Right. So I was like, hey, bonus rookie, I'll take it. So I evolved him to Rillaboom, so that's cool to have a shiny Rillaboom. And um, uh, <laughs> yeah, so after all that, I did not get a shiny Squirtle, and I just kind of gave up because I was sick of hatching eggs. Um, but luckily, I got an Outbreak to show up for Squirtle. Mm. And then I used the... Um, you can go to the cafeteria at Blueberry Academy, uh-huh. and one of the meals you can buy gives you sparkling power. Mm. Uh, and for all types, it gives you sparkling power for every Pokemon. It's only level one instead of level three. Okay. So it's not a lot better odds for shinies, but it's that little extra that you know you could use. And it's only 150 BP mm-hmm. uh, to get that meal. So, so with that and the outbreak of Squirtle, I got it fairly quickly, which was nice. Um, That's good. The last one I got was Cyndaquil. Mm-hmm. So you know Cyndaquil. Right. He was hard to catch just in He's general. He's hard to catch just one regular Cyndaquil. And so uh, I did eggs for that one also. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, okay, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't dealing with that. I'm going to do eggs. And that one I got in about 175 eggs or so. Oh, okay. So not bad, uh, especially in Scarlet and Violet. It is so quick to do eggs. The yeah. turnover is so much easier than, than previous games. So that one wasn't too bad. Um, so other than other than the Rillaboom, I have a Embor that's mm-hmm. shiny because his shiny's fantastic. All the flames are blue yeah. instead of red. He looks fantastic. Um, the best, one of the best ones was uh, actually both Fennekins that I have. So I love Fennekin, Delphox. That's a great uh, line mm-hmm. and great shinies. It's like gray and red. Looks looks amazing. Um, and the first one I got, so the first one I shiny hunted was Rowlet because he's my favorite. Right. And I was looking for two because I wanted a Decidueye also. Um, and just in the middle of looking for Rowlets, there was just a shiny Fennekin just sitting there, <laughs> just <laughs> totally random, ridiculous. That was so cool. Uh, so I was like, all right. Um, fast forward to like last week. Mm-hmm. Um, I was there was a Fennekin outbreak, and I was like, "Oh, I can get another one because I would love a shiny Delphox also, because uh, it's like purple and red and black it looks super yeah. good." Um, and so, so first, when you do an outbreak, you want to defeat sixty Pokemon, okay. sixty of that one Pokemon, and that'll heighten the shiny odds quite a bit. Um, and so after that, I went and got the the meal at, in the cafeteria for mm-hmm. the, the little extra bonus in sparkling power. Uh, and then I flew back and let a few spawn in. And normally I would um, look at look at all of them and then throw up a picnic, which gets rid of everything, mm-hmm. and then close the picnic immediately, and it respawns all new Pokemon. Mm. It's a great way to like quickly revolve through <laughs> through them. Yeah. Uh, didn't have to because there was just a shiny Fennekin just sitting there nice. <laughs> immediately. So that was probably my luckiest stuff was the two Fennekins. Um, it's a good thing I don't shiny hunt because I think mm-hmm. it would be really I think frustrating you would for it. me. Because, <laughs> I think you would hate shiny well, and hunting. Also, so I've got the shiny charm. Yeah. You know how many shinies I've seen? <laughs> Pretty much none. I like, mean, I guarantee you've run past a oh, bunch. Oh, sure. Yeah. It, it, it's because of how many Pokemon have really similar looking yeah. shinies, I'm sure I've run past a few. But like, I don't ever go, huh, that Pokemon looks different. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. So. Well, that's the thing is if they don't spawn in like a group where there's a bunch of like ones together Mm -hmm. and you don't know what the shiny form looks like, you really easily can just walk past it. I think, Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm so into shiny hunting that I know what shinies look like. Like I know that that his inner ear being light means he's shiny. Like I know (laughs) little things like that. Right. And so that makes shiny hunting easier because you just have the eye for it. And once you've shiny hunted a lot, you just, you see it from a mile away. Um, oh. like I was doing, uh, yesterday, my most recent training was Klotzer and, uh, the little like lobster Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, Klawitzer. Klawitzer. Like or whatever. Howitzer, but yeah. No. Uh, anyway, and thankfully his is pretty obvious. Um, he's normally blue. He's bright red when he's mm. shiny, just like a real lobster, which I think is cool. Um, and that one took like no time at all. Uh, that was an, that was an outbreak too. Um, but like that one was in the water mm. and they're, pretty far away and they're really small but like i can see the red pixel instead of the blue pixel basically <laughs> you know like yeah yeah anyway it's it's the shiny eye you know yeah. it's like i have a millennium eye 
uh, Yuki boy. <laughs> so, so anyway, yeah. Um, I'm I'm still missing I'm missing another totodile because I want a shiny fur alligator. Mm. Um, but yeah, I have one of each. I think I'm trying to think of what the most difficult one was. I think the most stubborn one was Froki mm. out of all of them for no particular reason. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just probability, right? Yeah. Like um, I, had, I had an outbreak of Froki mm-hmm. and I defeated 60. I just defeated like 62 just to be sure, you know? Um, so that's heightened shiny odds right there. I have the shiny charm. That's heightened odds right there. And then I did a sparkling power water sandwich, mm-hmm. which takes two Herba Mystica. Like, it's very expensive. Um, and it gives you sparkling power water three, level three. Yeah. Like, my shiny odds were like one in 400 or something. Like, it's very good odds. Yeah. Um, and it took, thankfully, so you can save before you make the sandwich. Mm. And then you don't have auto save on. And so if the half hour... Run, you run out of time for the sandwich and you didn't get the shiny, you can just close your game, oh, nice. reopen it and make a new sandwich. You didn't waste your Mystica, uh, because that's very expensive, you know, hard, mm-hmm. hard to get from, you have to go terror raids and all that. Um, and it took, f- it was the fourth sandwich that I got <laughs> one shiny Froki wow. and it's noticeable enough. I'm, I am very certain I didn't miss one. Mm-hmm. So like that was absurdly, unlucky like yeah. i probably saw i was probably at four to one odds looking for that froki yeah it's really insane <laughs> and then there's fennekin that i just ran into immediately without even having a big sandwich on mm-hmm. like it's so random <laughs> there's yeah. there's such that random element to it um which i guess is kind of the fun for me also but um it's it's the collecting thing also yeah. being able to just look and see my collection of all the the starters you know mm-hmm. i'm just like I'm like a, i'm like a dragon with my horde you know like yeah. sitting on my little horde of shiny pokemon yeah. but so, yeah so I, I did the um the the secret boss of uh, oh you did yeah i did cool. that, that i know whole, nothing about it line. so um and then so i fought him not that hard whatever yeah so as you invite coaches, you can battle them. I think their Pokemon are pretty much all like level 86. Okay. So it's pretty high. Fairly difficult. Are they all uh, double battles too? No, not all of them. Okay. Just some of them? Uh, I think if it's a Blueberry Academy uh, student or faculty member, gotcha. it'll be a double battle. and otherwise, Or if it's Rhyme, it'll be a double battle. But right. otherwise, uh, too, yeah. otherwise, it'll be one-on-one. Okay. And... Uh, you can also rebattle members of the club. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I've fought Carmen randomly just because I talked to her. Like yeah. she's just there. So I rebattled the the fairy girl. Yeah, yeah. What's her? I forget her name. Anyway, um, Liza. I don't remember something like that. She beat me. Oh, nice! It was the first she's fight tough. I had lost in that game in like a while. And you had level one hundreds, right? Yeah, dude, that's awesome. But my team is not very good against fairy types. Oh, it is yeah. not a very good yeah. anti fairy type. Very tough. I have one Pokemon with one steel type move and yeah. no Pokemon with poison type moves. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, without a poison, it's tough. Yeah. I think I went in um with a like poison plate Arceus. Oh. <laughs> so I think I was fine there because of that. Well, and like when but... I, when I fought her for the Elite Four thing, she was easy. Right. So yeah. I, I was surprised that she was that much harder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool though. I mean, I'm glad there there's some difficulty mm-hmm. to it. Like, <laughs> yeah, because like I fought. Sp- everything's a pushover. It's not really that fun yeah. to me. Because so. like I fought Namona again. I fought. Um, Gita again, and mm-hmm. just like it, Gita was definitely stronger, stronger, sure, but, but, but I still mean, easy. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. It was, uh, it's fun. That's that's one of the last things I haven't really done is the the coaches thing. I got, yeah. I got to do all that still. Yeah, and so unfortunately, it, it, it's kind of a pain to unlock that yeah. boss because you have to invite all these coaches over. You have to invite each coach like three or four times. Jeez, before interesting because you have to get you're basically building social links yeah and you have to get them to the point where they will trade with you oh, and that's yeah. when you know you've 
uh, reached that point. Yeah, I've heard of that. That is really cool that you get their Pokemon, though. Yeah. Like, I think when you throw them into battle, it even says, like, oh, this is Nimona's whatever or something yeah. like that. Like, yeah, really cool. Like, Iono's Magnemite you can get and yeah, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And so, um, uh, so I, I had to do that with several characters, and I, I didn't mm-hmm. realize that at first. So I kept, yeah. I was just inviting them, and How then not you? even, it, and like I talked to them once, and then like, I invite I somebody else. Yeah, I didn't realize. Oh, you have to talk to them multiple <laughs> like times to trigger different. Uh, uh, like I just feel like I'm pestering them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's well, funny. and the vast majority of Pokemon games, and the vast majority of NPCs that you talk to. They don't have multiple lines of dialogue for multiple right. conversations. Yeah. So that is a very new thing in this game for sure. Yeah. Like it's not just the classic RPG thing where they say one thing and that's it, basically. Yeah. That's something I really had to learn in Tears of the Kingdom, also. Mm-hmm. Like there's so much more NPC dialogue in that game. Yeah. And like just talking to random people, stuff happens, and I'm just like, this is crazy. Like uh-huh. this is the dialogue matters. That's, that's crazy. Yeah, That's that's yeah. What a con, <laughs> like it's not all flavor text. Like, yeah. Cause in old Pokemon, you'd talk to people just to see if they gave you a free item or something. Cause mm-hmm. that happened all the time. Like you go into somebody's house, you talk to them, you don't really read the dialogue and they give you a TM or something yeah. like, and that's it. That's, that's uh, the dialogue in Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> like, Oh no, now it matters. And there's social links. Yeah. You have to become friends. Yeah. Did you do the thing? At the at the main academy in Paldea, where you like tutor the Team Stars guys and stuff. So I think my game is bugged. Oh, <laughs> because yeah, I see. Mine was a bit weird too. I see on the when you when you go to the like crossing guards so that you can get to the rest of the yeah. school and just warp around. It shows that there's people waiting for me in the entrance and yeah. they are not there. Yeah, <laughs> they they have not spawned in, and so I have not been able to trigger that quest line yeah. because um, yeah. I had a weird mine was a bit weird too because I think there's a couple things I hadn't done from the main story and mm-hmm. I think that meshed weird with the new content you know yeah. and so I was like talking to Penny mm-hmm. and like following her around she was jumping around talking about stuff and then and then, yeah, like a different thing happened with Penny that was unrelated to the other thing. And I was yeah. like, I feel like these are two different stories happening right now. <laughs> this is very weird. Um, I would maybe talk to everybody because uh, I know in one section, it's like the the tall girl. Mm-hmm. And it was like a, looks like a wrestler with like right, the face yeah. paint and stuff. But she's dressed like a normal person. Mm. Like she's not dressed like that. Yeah. And so um, she just looks like a regular, really tall woman. Um and so maybe try to find them just dressed weird. I don't know. Yeah. Try to maybe talk to more people because it is actually a really fun storyline. Mm. Uh, I really enjoyed that. So, although I, I messed up one of the questions and so I lost, like, I didn't get a the better item I could have gotten. Oh. <laughs> Not a big deal, but um, it's so funny. So with the, the item printer, I don't mm-hmm. know if you've messed with that at all yet. No, I still haven't. Um, I think it's really fun um, because I just have everything i could ever want yeah like i'm talking ability patches Mm. which are normally only from like six star raids and stuff yeah because they let you it's like an ability capsule but it gives you their hidden ability yeah instead of just their other one and then gold bottle caps also Mm -hmm. which max out their ivs every single every single stat um i have like 20 of those and just like it's just absolutely absurd um and like terra shards, tons of terra shards. I can actually change Pokemon's terra types, mm-hmm. which is really nice. Um, anyway, it's just really fun. <laughs> I love having more than enough of everything that I can just easily train up stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's just that's fun. Plus the Pokeballs you get are really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Got a bunch of Moon Balls. Nice, so cool. Oh yeah. Um, uh. One of the reasons I like um, doing eggs mm-hmm. for shinies is they'll keep whatever Pokeball you caught the parent Pokemon in. Oh. And so if you caught them in a really cool Pokeball, you don't have to waste another one of those. Or if you don't have one because they're really rare, then you can just pass it down and then they're still in that Pokeball uh, when they're when they're hatched. Mm-hmm. If nice. you care about that kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, it's fun. 
who I will say uh, three of my shiny starters mm -hmm. also have marks on them, mm. which is pretty cool. That's a little extra rare thing. Oh, yeah. It's like they're either hungry all the time or sleepy. That's just like random little little extra things. So that was fun. Yeah. So that's cool. Anyway, that's it. <laughs> yeah. That's all I have to say about that. In uh, other news, um, still oh, watching yes. the uh, Justice League cartoon. Oh, uh, almost yeah. done with the original, and then nice. the next is Ultimate Justice League. Oh, Ultimate, okay. I don't know anything about that. Seemed like a very Japanese thing because there's like Helsing and Helsing Ultimate. And <laughs> yeah, so it does <laughs> Justice sound. League Ultimate. It does sound like an like an anime thing. Yeah, that's funny. Um, also, I watched. So, uh, Dragon Ball Z had a fair bit of filler, not nearly to the extent of like it's Naruto. Not, it's not Naruto, but, but yeah. yeah, but it had entire like filler arcs uh -huh. and I actually missed a lot of them. I didn't see a lot of them. Mm. And so I watched a YouTube video that was just reviewing all of the filler <laughs> arcs. So I'm like, nice. Oh great. This <laughs> fills in the gaps. So, uh, um, there's one, uh, cause after Goku dies in the Saiyan saga in like the first the first time he dies? The first saga, yeah, the first saga of Dragon Ball Z. Um, Piccolo takes Gohan to train him for when the Saiyan, uh, right. when Vegeta and Nappa are going to show up on Earth. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's this whole arc where Gohan is out in the wilderness training alone, mm -hmm. trying to survive. And he meets like this robot who's like uh, under a bunch of debris and like malfunctioning. And mm -hmm. they like talk and have conversations. And. Uh, it's actually really cute. Okay. Um, nice. And that's all filler. That was all yeah, original totally. to the anime? Yep. Interesting. Um, all written by uh, one person. Hmm. All those episodes. So And uh, and so there's a sense of cohesion to it as opposed to that's nice. some filler arcs where like each episode is written by a different person. or So it's just something. really random, yeah. Um, there's this whole like fake Namek saga as they uh, as oh the yeah arc which was in the abridged series and I think yeah. I saw um I think I actually saw this while it was airing while mm. Dragon Ball Z was airing um on Toonami uh where basically on the way to Namek they go to this place that looks like Namek but it turns out it was Not a fake really and Namek. it was an illusion and they were it, it just serves to be a distraction yeah it was purely there just to distract waste from time. the main plot yeah exactly <laughs> literally. That's so funny. Yeah. Um, and then uh, there's what uh, with the um, during the cell saga uh, before um, before the androids show up while they're training to uh, fight the androids and where Goku and Piccolo go and get driver's licenses. Yeah. The driving <laughs> driving. Part. And it's like it's really dumb and doesn't like fit anything so but it's random. really fun yeah. and silly i mean if if it's enjoyable then and toriyama fine, kinda, is right? a fun and silly kind of yeah, guy it's anyway true. um it's true. like dragon ball z certainly has serious moments but also yeah there's goku a lot is, of lighthearted goku is such a dork yeah. what a goofball like, yeah. <laughs> like oh and then like when he's running on snake way to get to king kai's planet in the manga that's extremely quick that's yeah only like a chapter or something he just does it and then he's there if that and but in the anime they had this little arc where he meets uh princess snake and she's like a giant she's like part of snake way or something and he, he, she like tries to eat him but uh she fails <laughs> she tried to eat and him. then goku falls into hell and yep. he has to escape hell and <laughs> yep there's this big demon dudes with like shirts that say hell on it or yeah. whatever. <laughs> but then in the, uh, in the English dub, they made changed it to Hiffle <laughs> so that it didn't say hell because so that stupid. wouldn't be, have been <laughs> appropriate. That's classic four kids right there. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, and uh. then um, just like teen Gohan attending high school and becoming mm -hmm. the great Saiyan man. Yeah. Which, that's that, cool. That's canon. He yeah. did become the great Saiyan man, but there's this whole like several episodes of filler around that that yeah, just got gotcha. in the manga that's awesome <laughs> <clears throat> which that was one where uh it wasn't so i think dbz took a break er, e either uh, one of two things happened either dbz took a break or uh they just started airing reruns 
before mm-hmm. they like got the rights to the Boo Saga or something. I don't know exactly how that all worked. Mm-hmm. All I know is that I was a kid, 12, 13 years old-ish, and there was no more new Dragon Ball Z to watch at the time. Sad. And, but there was actually quite a bit of Dragon Ball Z left. It's just that it hadn't been... Uh, it wasn't on Toonami yet. Yeah. And yeah. so I remember I got the first VHS Heck of yeah. uh, the Boo Saga that showed that filler arc. Gotcha. That's cool. With the Great Saiyan and Videl and all that. And then uh, there's some individual filler episodes too. Like there's <laughs> one that's just like mo- <laughs> a lot of it is just like Super Boo just angrily walking ar- uh, around on the lookout waiting. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> just, uh, that's it's that kind what of thing fun. that Dragon Ball Z gets flack for. <laughs> yeah, just a lot of nothing, basically. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, a bunch of grunting and staring and yeah. walking and and when Goten and Trunks fuse to become Gotenks mm-hmm. uh, in the manga, there's a brief thing about this that gets really drawn out in the anime mm-hmm. where he fights Boo and he fights by he uh, spits out these little ghosts. Ghost go tanks, they explode. <laughs> and he tried to beat Boo with that, and with it just that doesn't work. Technique. I was like, he's strong enough, he could really mess up Boo, but he's yeah. too like fixated on using these weird techniques. I gotta use my ghosts. <laughs> That's so weird. Yeah. That's like a dumb stand ability. <laughs> That's yep. what it sounds like. Yeah. Uh, that's great but it's like it's like imagine you have a stand that's like as strong uh, that's like a power stand like star platinum or something but without right. any of the extra powers but uh and you've got a stand like that but it also has some weird power that's way less effective and yeah. you only use I that, only use that. <laughs> that which sounds like something a jojo would do like yeah <clears throat> yeah that's that's awesome <laughs> It's like, why did you just punch him? Yeah. It's like, wah. Just, just ora ora. <laughs> it's like, nah, my bubbles will defeat him. Yes. Oh, All right. Well, that's wonderful. We can call it. I well, think. that little. Hope you enjoyed our little, little uh, anime cap on the episode. Yep. Uh, go watch some JoJo if you haven't. Yes. Speaking of, uh, and go follow us on X mm-hmm. and or Twitter, whatever you like to call it. I called it Twitter most of the time in this episode. So, right. <laughs> but anyway, because it'll uh, always be Twitter in our hearts. We're at the Brothers G Pod. <laughs> you can find our, me and Brian's uh, personal Twitters there too. Nikolai Def and oh. Brian something probably. No. Um, we we do still have a subreddit. I have not do. updated it in a long time. I'm not gonna worry about it much unless I actually see people actually use it. So if you're interested, go use it, and hey, then I'll actually update it. If you go comment on one of the episodes on there, we'll do it. Yep. Well, we'd love to. Yep. Uh, and if you're on YouTube, what up, YouTube? Why don't you smack that like? Smack that subscribe button. Leave you, a comment. You know how it is. We'd love to see your comments as well. Yeah. And if thank you, think you to everybody who's downloaded. Yes. We've reached over a thousand over downloads. Over a thousand downloads. We couldn't do it without you. Really cool. And and me. Yeah. Uh, because I download every episode. But yes, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Brian. You're at least seventy five of those. Yep. I don't every time. So. Yeah. There you go. I'm not inflating those numbers at all. <laughs> um, any day now, we're going to get that Raycon sponsorship. It's going right. to be awesome. Raycon, hit us up. Um, yeah, that's it. Tell us why we're wrong about Pal World or how right we are about Pal World. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, I guess we're signing off then. Yep. Good night. Good night. Sleep tight.